In this video, we will see how to create a simple data entry form in Excel without the need to use VBA or coding in Excel. We will also see how to create some data validation rules in order to enforce certain rules on the entered data so that the user who uses the form enters the data correctly. But before we start, if you're new here to the channel, I'd appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified with all future videos. And without further ado, let's get started. All right, so in order to create this simple data entry form, we need to make sure to unlock this tool and add it to our quick access toolbar. And in order to do that, we can just right click anywhere on our ribbon and then click on customize the ribbon and then go to the quick access toolbar. And here you'll see that by default, we have popular commands selected. What you'll need to select is either commands not in the ribbon or all commands. So we'll select commands not in the ribbon and then you can press F on your keyboard to go to the tools or the commands that start with F and you will find here form. Alternatively, you could just type form, F-O-R-M on your keyboard and you go directly to form. We'll just add it here to our quick access toolbar and click OK. And now it's been added to our quick access toolbar. My quick access toolbar is actually being shown below the ribbon, but you could show it above the ribbon and you could even have it above the ribbon because this is where it is by default in Excel. But I like to have it below the ribbon. So I'll click here on show below the ribbon in order to have it below the ribbon. All right, so after unlocking the form tool, here we have some employee data where we have the name, department, salary, and hiring date. And in order to use the form to enter more data or edit the data on this table, what we need is to create an Excel table out of this data. So to create an Excel table, just select any cell in your data and then press Control and T on your keyboard. And here you need to make sure my table has headers is checked because we do have headers here on the table. So we'll click OK. And now our Excel table is created. You can also rename this table to TBL employees, for example, here. And you can see also that we have a table style applied, which is this green color. You could apply any style that you would like, or you could press on clear here in order to remove any styling from the table. All right, so in order to open the form or use the form, you need to make sure that you have a cell selected in your Excel table, because if you have a cell selected outside and you click on form, you get this error here. This cannot be applied to the selected range. Select a single cell in a range and try again. So you need to make sure to select a cell in your Excel table and then click on form. And you'll see here that now we have a data entry form and you'll see here that we can scroll through the records using this scrolling bar or using these arrows here. So if you click on the down arrow, you will go one record down, one record down, as you can see here, you're scrolling through. You can also scroll through by dragging the scroll bar like this. And if you click on new, you're able to enter a new record. So I'll just enter here, Bob Lee, for example, and the department will be marketing and the salary will be 60,000 and we'll enter also a hiring date and we'll press enter. And you can see here that now we have a new record. However, the new record that we entered has a hiring date that has a plus sign at the end. So what we can do is to go back to the record here using the scrolling bar. So we're now at Bobbly and we can just delete the extra plus sign and we can press enter again again to confirm our editing of the record. So this is how we can edit a record. We could also search for records using this criteria button. So if you click on criteria, you can now start typing some search criteria. So our search with the name being John, for example. And then if you click on find prev and find next, you can cycle between the previous and next record that matches your search criteria. So if I click on find prev, I'll go to John Doe because it's at the beginning here of the table. If I click on find next, I'll go to John Smith, which is the next record that matches my search criteria. I can also search with numbers. So if I click on criteria here, I can search, for example, by the salary, 
being greater than 50,000, for example. And if I press enter, you can see here that I get the first record matching my search criteria and I can cycle through the records using find prev and find next as you can see here so I can go to find prev I'll go to Kojo Mensa and then Sophia Zhang her salary is also greater than 50 thousand and so on and so forth so this is how you can search through your records if you need to delete a record and you click on delete here you'll see here that you get a warning message and if you click ok the record will be deleted but i won't have the record deleted so i'll press on cancel now let's say that you were going through a record and you made a mistake here so i made a mistake by deleting a zero here so now Sophia Zhang's salary is 9,000 and this is too low compared to the other salaries obviously so if I haven't pressed on enter on my keyboard yet I can restore the record to the original values by clicking on the restore button and now as you can see here her salary has been restored to the original value now I click on close in order to close my data entry form all right, so let's say that we need to create a data validation rule to make sure that if a department is entered in the table, it's always one of the departments in this list of departments. So in order to do that, and we make sure that it is dynamic so that if we add more departments here, they are allowed in this table, then what we need to do is to create an Excel table out of this list of departments. So to do that, we'll select any cell in our list of departments and press on Control and T on our keyboard. And this table has a header here, which is the cell containing the word department. So we make sure that this is checked and we'll click OK. And as you can see here, we now have a departments table. We can name it TBL departments, for example, just to give it a distinct name. And now the next step to do is to create a named range that would refer to these departments that we have here. And because this is an Excel table, this named range will be dynamic in the sense that if we add more departments here, then the named range will expand. So to do that, we will go to the formula tab on the ribbon, click on name manager, and we'll click on new here. And I'll name my named range, I'll name it RNG departments, and it will refer to these cells here containing my departments. And you can see here that the named range is using the structured references for the Excel table. So we'll click OK here and we'll click on close. All right, so the next step here is to create the data validation rule. So we need to make sure to select all the records here that we have on the department column, excluding the department header, and then go to data and then data validation. And then under the settings tab here, under allow, we'll select list here and we'll make the source of the list. After putting our cursor here inside, we'll click on F3 on our keyboard and here we'll have a list of our named ranges. We'll select our RNG department's named range and click OK and OK again. And now we have a data validation list containing our departments and we won't have any other departments outside these departments allowed in our table. So if we click on form here in order to add a new record and we'd add a new record, and the department will make it just XYZ, something not present in the table, and I'll add a salary here, and I'll add a hiring date. And when we press enter, you can see here that the data validation rule kicked in and it says that the value does not match the data validation restrictions defined for this cell and it's referring actually to the cell in the department column. So you can see here that it has not accepted any departments that is outside the department list here that we have on the right. So I'll press on cancel here and if I press on close, I'll actually get the data validation rule to kick in again. So what I need to do is to click this X button here. Now, the message that we got from the data validation rule was not very descriptive. So in order to make it a more descriptive message, I'll just select my cells again here and I'll go to data validation. And then on the error alert, I'll just create a custom error here that would be titled invalid department. And the error message, please enter a department from the list and we'll click OK here. So now if we try again here and we'll add a new record here, Susan White, and her department will be XYZ and the salary will be 60,000 and we'll add a hiring date. And if we press enter, you'll see here that we get a more descriptive error. So I'll just close my form here 
And let's say that we need to add one more department here to our department list so that it would be accepted in our table. So I'll add, for example, design here. And now if I try to add a new record and it will be with the new department here. And if I press enter, you can see here that the new department has been accepted. Let's close our form and let's say that instead of having a data validation list, we still need to have our data validation rule, but we don't want a data validation list here. We just want the rule to be enforced, but without having a data validation list. Can we do that? We can certainly do that. So I'll just select my cells again here and then I'll go to data validation. And then under the settings, instead of having this as a list, I'll have it as a custom formula and I'll use a count if formula and I'll make sure that the count if of the department that I have on cell D4 and you can see here that cell D4 is the active cell because this is the cell that is in white and all the other cells are in gray. So the white cell is the active cell and it's like you're writing your formula in this cell. So you need to make sure that the references are correct here. So we have a relative reference of the cell D4 and it's like you're writing your formula in the white cell and you're dragging it down. So this reference is correct now. I'll close my brackets and we'll make sure that the count if of the department is greater than zero in the RNG department's named range, which is basically the list of departments so I click OK and now this is going to enforce the rule whether you add a new department using the form or if you just add it manually here so if I try to add a new department XYZ here you can see here that the rule is enforced and we don't have data validation lists here in the department column anymore you could also add other rules so for example you could add a rule for the salary so if you select the cells in the salary go to data and then data validation you could have a rule for a whole number that the salary is greater than or equal to 30,000. Maybe this is the minimum wage and click OK. And now if you try to add a salary, whether using the form or just manually. So if you type here that the salary is 25,000, for example, it will not be accepted. And of course, you can use the form tool with any Excel table. So this is another Excel table containing our customers list. If you select any cell and click on form, you're able to use the form with this Excel table as well. You can add new records, delete existing records or search for certain records. Now, let me tell you a cool tip. In addition to the ability of having your form here as part of your quick access toolbar, you can have it on a whole separate tab in your Excel workbook. To do that, we'll just right click anywhere on the ribbon and click on customize the ribbon. And under customize ribbon here, under commands not in the ribbon, we'll find the form and here, under the main tabs, we'll actually create a new tab. So I click on new tab here and I'll create a new tab and I can rename my tab here. I'll, I'll name it data entry and I'll rename the group that I need the form to be under. I'll click on rename. I'll name it forms, for example, and click OK. And now I can actually drag my form here to my forms group. So now you can see here that my form tool is under my forms group and I'll click OK to confirm my changes. And now I have a data entry tab where I have a forms group and I have my form tool and you can add more groups and tools here to this separate tab. Please be advised that creating a new tab is specific to your computer and it won't be available on each and every computer that the workbook is opened on. All right, so in this video, we've seen how to create a simple data entry form in Excel without needing to write any code. And we've also seen how to enforce some data validation rules in order to make sure that the entered data is correct. So if you found this video helpful, please make sure to like the video and share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified with all future videos. And please make sure to follow us on social media. You'll find the links down below in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.